This is Bible Protector talking about how to know the pure Cambridge edition of the King James Bible. It is important to have the correct, perfect and final text of the King James Bible since there are correctors, e.g. publishers, who have changed some aspects of King James Bible texts. The final form of the King James Bible is the pure Cambridge edition, circa 1900, which conforms to the following. 1. Or Sheba, not and Sheba, in Joshua 19 verse 2. 2. Sin, not sins, in Second Chronicles chapter 33 verse 19. 3. Spirit of God, with a capital S on the word spirit, not spirit of God, with a lowercase s, in John, uh, sorry, Job 33 verse 4. Number 4. Whom ye, not whom he, in Jeremiah 34 verse 16. Number five, Spirit of God, with a capital S in the word spirit, not Spirit of God, lowercase s, in Ezekiel chapter 11, verse 24. Six, flieth, not fleeth, in Nahum 3, verse 16. Seven, Spirit, with a capital S, not Spirit, lowercase, in Matthew chapter 4, verse 1. Eight, further, not farther, in Matthew chapter 26, verse 39. Number nine, bewrayeth, not betrayeth, in Matthew chapter 26, verse 73. Ten, spirit, with a capital S, not spirit lowercase, in Mark 1, verse 12. Eleven, spirit lowercase s, not spirit capital, in Acts 11, 28. And number twelve, spirit lowercase s, not spirit with a capital S, in 1 John chapter 5 and verse 8. These tests help you when you pick up a Bible to decide or to define, to discern, whether or not it is a pure Cambridge edition. These are just um, easy guideline key kind of passage tests you can look up and these are designed also to help you identify what edition it might be that you are looking at because of the particular kind of differences there are in particular different editions of the King James Bible. And to reduce this down, make it fairly simple, there's just 12 differences supplied. And this is designed to help identify or know about all editions of the King James Bible in comparison to the pure Cambridge edition. So these are going to be places where you should get all 12 agreeing with the pure Cambridge edition whereas you might find that other editions agree in 11 or less places. There's another easy test. This is what I would do when I come into a second-hand bookshop and I look at a Bible and if I want to test it just quickly and uh, we can always go on into the 12 tests from there but just for the sake of time I look at Ezra chapter 2 and verse 26 and look at the word whether it's spelt Geba, G-E-B-A, which is pure Cambridge edition spelling, or whether it's G-A-B-A, Gabba, uh, which is probably just about every other edition of the King James Bible. And uh, there are just a few editions that may have the same as pure Cambridge edition and not be pure Cambridge edition, but uh, that's a very easy test to do just as a one reference test. There is on the Bible Protector website a more comprehensive list which compares uh, the 20th century standard type of Oxford edition and likewise London edition with the pure Cambridge edition and that's at the Bible Protector website slash editions. And what you do with that list is you can sort of more comprehensively see what are the differences between uh, what is you know sort of the current or standard Oxford type of editions as compared to the pure Cambridge edition. And so that's designed for a more in-depth listing of particular differences that might be found. Um, whereas all editions of the King James Bible and all their variations, that has never been listed and cannot be listed. I mean, even someone like F. H. A. Scrivener, who made some detailed catalog of uh, differences in editions of the King James Bible, never was able to uh, comprehensively and exhaustively catalogue every last place. Also on the Bible Protect website there is available a 
a uh, fairly detailed list of differences between the 1611 edition as far as you know typographical errors spelling variations and and supposed word differences this is not a full or complete list but it is a list that details something like uh, nearly about or around 4000 differences and these are comparing 1611 with the pure cambridge edition uh, but as far as just to compare comprehensively any edition with the pure Cambridge edition the only way that could be done is if you had another edition and you could of course and it would be a tiresome task to compare word by word with the pure Cambridge edition and the pure Cambridge edition is supplied uh, electronically on the Bible Protector website which you can download or uh, look at online so there's been an accusation by some people that say well that 12 uh, passage or, or test list that you have if that doesn't match up with your additions list on your website because those 12 uh, tests that you list there uh, at least one of them and the one I'm referring to is Matthew 26 verse 73 is not in the additions list which compares the additions list compares between the Oxford and London edition from the 20th century um, how is it that your 12 tests different 12 tests are different to the sort of the normal uh, more comprehensive editions differences list well the easy answer is because the 12 tests are designed for a purpose and that is one to identify the pure Cambridge edition as compared to any edition of the King James Bible and uh, it's very likely uh, that the pure Cambridge edition alone will get all 12 of those tests correct as compared to any other edition of the King James Bible and secondly um, th see there's m never been an edition that we know of that's matched up with that 12 test list other than the pure Cambridge edition and secondly because the the more comprehensive list of about 500 differences uh, on the Bible Protector website which is the editions list uh, comparing the London Oxford and pure Cambridge edition that is designed more uh, for, as I said, it's a more detailed look at uh, specific editions which are current or common and comparing that to the pure Cambridge edition. And in regard to the Matthew 26 verse 73 difference, which is uh, be rayeth, not betrayeth, that change has been made in some modernized type of King James Bible editions. Now you're going to find many more changes besides those in modernized type of editions. Uh, you can find editions that completely change uh, the th endings of words away and and just make it into uh, so-called modern spelling. Well, these kind of changes cannot be fully or comprehensively list in lists because there's so many. I mean, you, you could have lists that show every you know printing mistake ever made and every editorial difference in any edition ever made and there's going to be numerous amounts when you come and look at punctuation and it's just not possible really to list in so much detail every single difference and it's not necessary I mean all you need is a basic guide of 12 tests and that 13th one I mentioned which is the Geba uh, reference in Ezra chapter 2 and verse 26 and you just take that and you can have a fair idea from that. If you want to study and look at, at particular differences, why is the Peel Cambridge edition correct as compared to, let's say, Oxford editions, whatever, then you take the editions list and you look in that area with that. So the accusation that somehow, um, and this has been the uh, accusation, it may be noted that even here in the context of someone suggesting a definitive piece of research these two lists do not agree not only not all the items listed in the key identifiers appears in the supposedly definitive list there is no definitive list um, so it's just it's just an error uh, someone either is being deceptive or, or else is making out uh, for whatever other reason that they do not agree and uh, it's an intellectually incorrect argument to make uh, because I never claimed that the uh, editions list is comprehensively 
giving every single difference between every single edition that exists. It simply does not. As I said, it only compares London edition from the mid-20th century and an Oxford edition from the mid-20th century as compared to, um, and also the Concord edition of, of Cambridge as compared to the pure Cambridge edition and perhaps the standard text edition from Cambridge as well. But uh, even in all that, it's not a comprehensive list as such. It is just a good guide that you can compare with around, as I say, about 500 passages and uh, look up, you know, what's the spelling? Is it inquire with an E, inquire with an I? Um, is it entreat with an E or, or entreat with an I? Um, there's all kinds of small variations of that nature that you might find. And you might find a word like music. Uh, is it spelt with a K on the end or not? Public, likewise. And some other kinds of things like that. Well, those kind of things you can look at and study out. But what it comes down to is we're saying there's one standard edition of the King James Bible that has the wording, has the spelling, has the punctuation, has everything correct. And the meaning of the words, you see, and that's the problem what happens is you can get meaning changes by some of these changes that take place in some editions. Changing bereath to betrayeth is definitely changing from one word to another. Um, even just that common one of or Sheba as compared to an Sheba, really one, only one can be correct. Um, whom ye, not whom he, that's from Jeremiah 34, 16, that's a common one. Look, ultimately, grammatically, only one, and contextually, and doctrinally, only one actually is correct. And when we're saying these things, we're not saying that the King James Bible is wrong, or you'll be misled as such if you have an edition that has it different. Um, clearly, that's not the case. But what it is, it, it will provide... Um, it will be a source of less clarity and it is inconsistent with the nature of God and his ways to have an addition or to have as it's been many Bibles and never have it resolved what is correct there is a correct standard and the way we identify and understand that is through receiving of the proper tradition and knowing that the Lord has worked in a way in history through his providence to ensure correct presentation of his holy word in English.